today, I brought a very special toy out to the beach. My brand new conventional reel. This is a Accio's Sportcast STR Kuro 666. I think that's the size number. But this reel is meant to cast really far. And I'm going to be using it against, you know, my, my classic spinning reel setup. This is my Stella 5000. This is my go-to reel when I'm fishing on the surf on my 10-foot rod. But today, I'm going to be testing the real difference between a spinning rod and a conventional rod. Today, I'm going to be trying it out for the first time on the surf. I've been practicing this on the football field for like a couple of months now. Haven't been able to get on the beach, but now I finally have an opportunity to come out to the beach and do a little bit of fishing. Hopefully the fish cooperate and I can show you how to catch some fish on it. So this Accio Sportcast, I actually decided to get it when I was watching videos on fishing in North Carolina. When you're fishing in North Carolina, sometimes you have to cast really far. The theory is the spinning reel can't cast as far because of the way the line comes off. As you cast it, it flies off this way. Versus the spool of a conventional reel, it flies just straight off like this. See, just goes straight off. So a conventional reel will actually have the ability to cast further than a spinning reel. The catch is there's a little bit of a learning curve on using that. You might get some bird nests, you might have some headaches, but I'm here to show you it's not so hard. I learned it pretty quickly. I want to see if you can do the same. And I found that this particular brand from the UK is called Accios. People have been using it for distance casting for a pretty long time at this point, and it's proven to, to go really far. The best part about it is the magnetic brake system in there that allows you to really whip it without getting that, that bird's nest. Also, I mean, it just looks really cool. I mean, come on. It's that black and gold trim. It looks really cool. Now, I spooled this up with 15 pound line on here. This is a 20 pound braid on here. For a spinning reel, it's very simple to cast. You just put your finger here, hold it, open, cast. Very low chance of bird's nest. Versus something like this, there's a lot more room for error. There's things you need to tinker with to make sure that you can cast it correctly. I found that practicing this at the football field really helped because I don't want this to be the first time I'm casting here. So this is not the first time I've cast it here. I don't know, it just feels like a new game for me. I still keep my, my spinning reels in my primary arsenal but I have this as kind of like a fun rod to use. So I'm gonna go fishing with this and let's see what happens. So let's get started. So just set up my brand new conventional reel here. I put it on my three to 10 ounce, 12 foot rod. This is gonna be my long rod. I'm gonna shoot this out as far as I can. This one is gonna be my short rod, which is 10 foot. And that's gonna be in the first trough. We've got fresh shrimp for bait today. We've also got a whole bunch of different salted baits. Squid, clam, shrimps, and a lot of times, you're gonna to wanna to put a lot of different varieties on your lines and kinda of get a feeling of what the fish wanna eat that day. So, first we're gonna put on shrimp. Put it on, hooked once through, like that, and then we can put a piece of clam on. And these are our special salty clams aka clammy bits and they'll go on just like this whenever this gets bitten off if it gets bitten off we'll have clam on there as bait as well and you don't want it too big because the fish that we're going after their mouths aren't huge if it's too big it won't fit in their mouth okay so what i'm doing right now is i'm checking to see the brakes right now there's magnetic brakes within here that will stop it from spinning so fast and I'm checking to make sure that it's set a little tighter. That's good. This is about to be your first time casting this on the beach. Yes, it is. We might get a bird's nest here. That worked. I'm in the first trough. Locked down on the first trough. Now I'm going to put this down in my rod holder. Okay, I'm going to watch that rod. So now we're going to bait up the second rod now. In the same way, we're going to use shrimp and clams first and see how that works out. If we're not getting any bites on this, we're going to switch up the bait. On. That was fast. 
Oh shoot, I forgot to I forgot I was supposed to do it. As you reel it, you have to um, bring it left and right on my spool. So it comes in evenly. Oh, I got a fish! Got a whiting. Nice, that's a good whiting too. And a bit on the clam combo. See how the shrimp are gone? But still, this is left, the clam is left. It looks so nice. And that's a good whiting right there. So even after shrimp is gone, you'll still get it on clam. That's a whiting. This is what we're after, whiting. I'm gonna rebate. Okay, so I'm gonna lay it back here in the sand. And you're gonna start slow and then bring the momentum forward from there. I got it out without birds nesting. That's great. Now I gotta work on distance. <laughs> Let me explain to you something. When you're reeling in with one of these kind of reels, it doesn't have this, um, there's a guide. Usually there's a guide that goes back and forth. But with this kind of reel, you have to use your finger and bring it back and forth because otherwise it'll spool up in one section and that's not what you want. As you're reeling it in, you have to you have to put it into place, line it up. You don't want it all spooling in one place. So you're gonna reel it down, pull up, reel it down, pull up. What is it? It's a little bluefish. Little blue fish. I hit like one too. See, it can't even get through the, can't even get through the bait. Wow. I think it didn't try hard enough. I caught it before it could. Blue fish. Okay, Aaron, you're gonna try for the first time. Let's see. <laughs> Remember how we practiced? We practiced. We practiced. Okay. We try it out. Uh, Nice job, no bird's nest, there we go. I was kind of scared. How so far did it go out? Not very, I didn't really fling it, fling it. But oh, I'd, we gotta practice getting it further, right? I'd rather be safe than sorry. True. When you get a reel with, when you get a reel with the magnetic brakes, one of these conventional reels, as long as it has magnetic brakes, it's gonna be a lot easier to cast further distances. These magnets help slow the rotation down and give you more control of that spool. What people get birds nested on is when, um, when the spool is just spinning way too fast and there's no control. This magnetic spool is where it's at. I haven't gotten a bird's nest yet. I've been casting it pretty far too. Bluefish. Like under the bottom left corner. It's the same story every time. No bites. Climby bit's still on there. And it's looking beautiful. A 
does the catch. It's far. Where did you pass that one? I passed that one to the second trough. This was actually pretty. This is my furthest cast I've done so far. How does it feel to cast? It feels really good. It's really different than the other one where you can't just whip it real quick. You have to start out slow and then you whip it. Because if you do it way too fast, it spins so fast that the spool can't even keep up. So it's just been a practicing, learning, learning experience. The, sorry, the gulls are just so loud. They're so loud. <laughs> I found a jelly ball. And sometimes you look inside the jelly ball and there's there's crabs inside there and they're alive. And you take those crabs and they make really great bait. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have any in it. But look keep an eye out for these. Look inside, you might find a little spider crab. Those are great bait. That's a nice one too. That one took our clam. Oh my gosh, it's going crazy. It took a clam? It took our clam, yeah. I had, I had fresh, this has been sitting for so long. That's the thing, it's been sitting for like, two hours. It, like forever. I haven't changed the bait. It was just my clam on there for a long time. And that's the trophy fish we were looking for. Nice, let's see how long. 15 inch. That's a keep. 15 inch. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Dang. Okay. That's a keep, huh? That's a keeper. And I better I better hide it before everyone comes here and tries. Wow, this starfish is like stuck here. Yeah, I told you. Look. It's really stuck, stuck. Wow. <laughs> it's Patrick Star. Ready to let him go? Yeah. I just hope he does okay. I think you'll do okay. You gonna do okay? Put your hands up if you're gonna do okay. Okay. It's been a really fun day. We, you know, we had, I had my mom out here. My dad came out now, uh, sat here, relaxed on the beach. It's, any day at the beach is a good day. It was actually a really slow day of fishing. We, we've been here for like four hours. I got a few bites, got a few fish, but that's just kind of how fishing really goes. It's not constant catching fish all the time. Sometimes there's no fish at all. I'm just lucky I got some nice fish out of it. So what I'm trying to say is, Learning to use your gear and having fun with your gear is also a really nice perk because sometimes you don't catch fish. As long as you're enjoying the act of fishing, it's really fun to learn something new like this conventional reel. If you have any kind of recommendations, we love to try new things. Let us know in the comments below. Is there a kind of bait that you want to see us use? A certain kind of rig? A certain kind of, um, certain kind of reel? A certain kind of rod? Let us know in the comments. We love to try new things. I've written a lot of tips in the form of ebooks, PDFs, and in videos. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website, hayskipperfishing.com. We've got tons of info on there. Anyone who's trying to learn how to do surf fishing, pier fishing, saltwater fishing, yeah, I've got a lot of tips on there. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you next week. 
Okay, so one of the best parts about going fishing is getting to keep your fish, cooking it however you want, and having an awesome meal out of it. So, I'm gonna fillet my fish out right now. I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ways to eat fish. Here's the big pompano. Now I've got my fish, now it's time to prepare the rest of my ingredients. All right, so now we're back in the kitchen and we're gonna whip up a quick ceviche, which is um, made with the raw fish cooked with lime. And it's not actually cooked. You use the citrus and you spritz it all over the, the fish and you put it with the uh, cucumbers and pretty much whatever fresh vegetable you want in there. Um, and the lime actually cooks the fish with just the acidity. Okay. Pretty much everything is cut up now. So now 20 minutes before I eat, I'm gonna put this all together, mix it into a big bowl, and then we're gonna squeeze some lime into it. Mmm. Very fresh. Mmm. How does the fish taste? Very buttery. I love the texture. And the flavor with everything together is really nice. Mm. Alright, Yarn. You wanna try it now? Ooh, ooh, that looks good. That's juicy looking. Cheers. Mmm. Mm. This is really good. Really fresh tasting. 